All right, so it's been a few months since we've done any YouTube videos on the GT Aggressor Pro. I'm at 550 miles on this bike. I meant to do a 500 mile review. I'll insert the clip of how that went. I was gonna do like a real time review while riding. Here's the clip how that went. To being wet, how this is gonna go. Well, I guess that's how it's gonna go. But the reason for the video today is I finally got an air fork. Top of my toolbox is a mess. I have pieces and parts everywhere, but I got a Rock Shocks Judy. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be the video of putting it on. Pretty simple, it comes with the star nut. Um, the only thing I didn't buy that I don't have is the little air pump. So I have one coming, but obviously manual lockout for climbing, which I doubt I'll ever do. I, I, my intentions are to keep enough air in it that it's pretty stiff. Um, but yeah, and then just the air on this side. And it has rebound control on the bottom of the left fork, which is really cool. But yeah, this is just a little jig. I'm sure you're familiar if you're watching this video. If you're not, it's a jig because you have to cut these steers off. This is super long stock so that, you know, they don't know what the head tube length is on whatever bike you're going to buy or whatever spacer setup you have. So they don't know how long, you know, it is. So not universal isn't the right word, but to make it fit more bikes, it just has a long steer. So you put this on there and it clamps it tight and then it gives you that little slot so that you can put your hacksaw blade in there and cut it off straight so that it's not all crappy and wonky. Then just press the star nut down in it and install it. Should be pretty simple. So I'm gonna put it on a time lapse here so you can see I still don't have a bike stand, so it's just still gonna be a crappy, every time I take the front end off this thing, which I have a few times put headset in it, different things, I say I gotta get a bike stand, I just still haven't, so don't mind the fact this thing's gonna be laying on the ground when I'm uh, in between taking the old one, old fork off and the new fork on. to mention that 550 miles this fork has failed um, i'm noticing that it drops out real bad when you lift the front end off the ground super clattery and noisy which is a spring and oil fork as you can see the residue on the bottom of that fork so i'm losing oil at the bottom you can see the oil build up on that nut i'm losing oil it i mean i wipe it because i can't stand the look of it but it gets it all over the stanchions oil after every ride and there's play between the stanchion and the tube so there's a bushing in here, obviously, and it's worn out. But, <coughs> excuse me, cheap fork, spring and oil fork. On dirt bikes, I'd prefer spring and oil fork over air every day of the week. By the sounds of things on a mountain bike, air is the way to go. Again, excuse the fact that I don't have a bike stance. We're doing this on the ground. But pretty simple to pull that fork off. Obviously, just loosen the, the stem and the top nut. Took the keeper off for the brake cable and then took the front brake caliper off. I'll take this front wheel out once the fork's off. Obviously I'm going to cut the fender mud flap if, off of it and put it on the new fork, but pretty simple. I got to get it out of there and measure it. Right, so the fork's off. You can see this bottom race for that bottom steering or headset bearing is split. Thankfully that's the way it's designed. I don't know if that's really the race. It's not really a race, it's just a spacer. So I have to get that off and put it on the new fork. But I need to measure this distance length of the steer so I can translate it over to the new one and cut it off. simple. I measured the length of the steer, scribed a line with a screwdriver, put my jig on, cut it off nice and straight. Let's see how straight the cut is. Hopefully that looks straight. Yeah, now I'm going to deburr this outside and in with a little Dremel tool and put that spacer on for the bottom headset bearing, put it up together. to 
explain the star nut. I just put it in there, use this socket, tapped it down in, set it the same distance in as the stock fork. So we know we're, we're where we need to be. Put this headset back on real quick, or stem rather, and bars, and then uh, switch the brakes, put the brakes on, move that mud flap over, we're good to go. This is like a 10 minute job, 20 minute job. is on brakes are on stems on and tight headset it's i mean without the fender obviously because i just i'll put it on but so that you can see the install on the fork um i mean the thing was easy to install without I, it's a little light on pressure i don't know exactly what it is i could check it but i have a pump coming tomorrow a fox uh fork pump so i'll check it tomorrow i'm sure i'm gonna need to put air in it but even with it being a little lower on air than I think I'm gonna run it, it feels so much better in that spring fork. And then I'm gonna see if I can get this thing to stand up, the phone, so that we can video the drop test, just so you can hear the sound. Cause I mean, if you've watched, if, if you're, this is your first video on the GT Aggressor Pro that you're watching that I've made, please, uh, for your own sake, if you're building one out or thinking about buying one, obviously for me too, I'd love the views and the subs, but, um, watch my, I have like 19 or 20 videos in a playlist on the GT Aggressor Pro, and you'll hear slowly how I eliminated all the rattling and nasty sounds that these things have out of the box between that uh, cassette and the bottom bearing and just, and then that last rattle was the nasty spring rattle of that front fork, which again, it did okay, 550 miles in, the fork is junk, it's failed. And to the point where it's a little, you know, a little nervous to ride. I would normally do a test ride, now that this is on, or try to do a test ride. It's last week of December, last couple of days of December in Northwest Pennsylvania. It's actually not terribly unpleasant out, but hopefully get a ride video here to show the sound difference, maybe compare it to the stock one. But yeah, so the fork's on. It's a RockShox Judy. I think this was the last real issue this bike had. The only things left to do, I have wheels. I just figured I'd wait until I killed these wheels, which I haven't, so I'm gonna keep running them. Uh, but the last things I need to do are hydraulic brakes, still has stock brakes, and a dropper post. And other than that, this bike is basically where I want it. Real quick, we're gonna to try to catch the drop test and the lack of sound that ting is my wedding ring. But... That old fork was terribly noisy. This is awesome. I can't wait to show my lack of skills jumping this thing and listen to no noise except myself. So it's complete. Fender's back on it. Looks good. I love the black stanchions, the black tubes. It looks great on the bike. And the only other color on it is blue on the lockout knob, which kind of matches the blue on the bike. It's obviously a different blue, but it goes with the theme a little. Easy install, way nicer fork than the stock spring and oil kind of junk fork. Yeah, get my air pump tomorrow, put the right correct amount of air pressure in it. And, we should be off on the run. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.